the school system is one. Uh, I can only imagine, Jackie fills us in a little bit what goes on with the school system and uh, the kids, nobody knows what to do. Uh, one minute they're taking their lessons on the computer at home, and then the next minute they want you in the school, and then you've got to wear a mask, and then you're going to be so far. Nobody really knows if it's any good or anything. Nobody knows. Do you? I certainly don't. I don't know what to think of it. Some days I get so angry and mad, I'd like to take a clock and go over to home on it. Straighten it out. But that's not going to do it either. What do you do when all this is happening? What I'm saying is there's this frustration and controversy and everything you can imagine that's going on. And everything is rocking and reeling. What do we, what is the most important thing that we as believers can do? Have faith, Have faith and trust in the Lord, and trust in his word. I think we all agree with that. How many know you've got to, you've got to maintain faith? Believe God. Mm -hmm. You have got to do that. You've got to go somewhere to get your faith energized and charged. You can't run on low batteries. Right. I'm telling you, you, can't, you won't make it. If we don't get around some people, especially now, that believe in the power of God. Well, this morning in the message, I want to take you around with some people <laughs> that had their batteries energized. I, I just want to introduce, if you don't know them yet, I want, I want to introduce you to them and some folk that had some belief power in God Almighty. Amen. You mess with them, you're messing with your life. They were, they were charged. They wasn't going to compromise and didn't care who it was was trying to get them sidetracked. Mm -hmm. Because they had been around some folk that knew what they were talking about. I'm going to tell you, God's got some people that know what we're talking about this morning. Amen. They know. We've been through. We, we were singing songs uh, with somebody this morning. She knew. <laughs> Nobody messed with her too bad. That was my mama. You, you, you just didn't. You just didn't. One of the last things she told me. Said, Ralph, you hang right in there, honey. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare quit. So many lives depend on what you do. That's right. You hang right in there. Amen. Hang in there. Amen. What I tell the church today, what can I tell anybody? I have my own thoughts. Some days I'm telling tell you, I don't, I don't have it all together. I don't. I get on that track and I get, uh, oh, I get so frustrated. I don't stay that way all the time because I have to grab myself by the bootstraps and Pick yourself up and say, no, I'm not going that direction. I am not going that direction. And God has put some intestinal fortitude in us that he don't want any of us to quit. Nope. And he told Peter. Peter was, you know, he didn't do everything right. He, he was a rascal sometimes. He even denied that he even knew the Lord. Three consecutive times. Mm -hmm. Said, I don't know him. I don't know any part. I don't want any part of that. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus stopped Peter in his tracks and he said, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat mm -hmm. and throw away the parts that are no good. Can I tell you this morning? Satan has desired to have you. Yes, he has. He has desired to have you. He's desired to have America. He's desired to have the world. But you ain't going to get it. <laughs> Jesus stood on the precipice and said, Satan has desired to have you, but I have prayed for you. And when you get converted, now that you have been converted, I want you to go and strengthen the brethren. Amen. Peter was one that should go strengthen the brethren. He just denied even the Lord three times. And you want him? No, no, you've got to get converted first. The word converted means you've got to get turned around. You've got
you're going to get your mind changed. You can't stay in the same doll room. Uh, if you, you can't hang around people that everything is wrong all the time and nothing is ever right. That's right. I'm sorry, you can't, you, you can't make it in that mindset. Yes, things go wrong. Yes, things turn upside down. Yes, Peter denied the Lord, but he didn't stay there. Amen. Now, I'm sure everybody hears all, every thought they've had this past week, all been positive. <laughs> well, I'll have to run out the back door because all my thoughts are not positive. Mm -hmm. Stuff happens to me. Mm -hmm. You get your angry and say, where are you, Lord? How come you don't come through for me? Mm -hmm. that's, why they, that's why the enemy wants us. And I read, but I'm going to read from the book of Daniel. A story, and I'm sure most all of us here have heard it. But this is, uh, because I sang with my mother for years and years and years and years. She was my musician in the church for, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 years, however long I've been in ministry. At one time or another, my mother was always there, always played music. We always sang together. And when it wasn't me and mom, we'd get others, parts in the family, and they, they, we would sing. But I'm telling you, it was good to hear her this morning. Who'd you say? She's in glory, but I'm telling you, it was good to hear her. I'm glad Dylan was here singing with her. Yes, hallelujah. I said, if some of the family had, had heard this morning, uh, Dylan and I singing up here, they'd flip. I don't care how far you are from God, they would flip out. You can't, you can't outrun the anointing. Amen. Amen. You cannot outrun the long arms of God. You can't do it. It's mission impossible. You can't get away from him. When he said, when you've decided to give your heart and life to God, Jesus himself told us in the word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's right. You can read that frontwards and backwards, and I've yeah. told you this before. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Thee forsake nor thee leave, never will I. Amen. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Thee forsake, nor thee leave, never will I say the same thing. So you're on his list to prosper. Mm -hmm. You're on his list to make it. Mm -hmm. I dare you to look at somebody and say, I'm going to make it. Yeah, I'm going to make it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to make, make it. it. Amen. I'm going to make it. Yep. I'm going to make it. Amen. Make it. Amen. You have your Bible? I'm going to read from... Daniel, chapter 3. How many of you know that Nebuchadnezzar built a great, great big golden image? Yeah. This is what he said about it. He said, then, then a herald cried out, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. There's been a lot of people set up an awful lot of things. Yeah. I don't care what they say about COVID-19. I ain't buying it. That's right. And they would like us all to bow to that and to succumb to that. You're barking up the wrong tree. People of faith ain't going to bow to that stuff. Telling you. I don't know what God wants you to do with it, but I know what He's put inside of me that the people of faith have got to stand up here somewhere. Somebody's going to get sick and tired of all this garbage and they're going to do something about it. Amen. Mm. I said, somebody's going to get, get, when you get ready, when you get people full of faith and they get fed up with something, you don't want to be around me when I get fed up. Yep. In my. <laughs> it might look like I'm on a tear or a vengeance, it's because I am. When I really get fed up, my wife knows when to be quiet. When the children know when to go sit down and behave themselves, when I really get fed up with something. And when my dander, my, my mother used to call it, when my dander is up and my eyes get to greening, you had better be paying attention or you're in for it. That's Medway talk. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody messed with even Mama when her dander got up. Because you knew that you knew that you knew. God's going to have some people that in this world that their dander's going to get up. 
get out. And you can't mess with them. That's right. My father always said, it ain't the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Yep. A chihuahua, a chihuahua can do a number on you if you're not careful. <laughs> Then you get some big old black lab like we got. She's never met an enemy. She'll lick you to death if you come here for the first time. That's why I have more than one dog. I would imagine she knows how to growl and bark and all of that, but she never acts like a chihuahua. Maybe she's got a lot of fight in her, but I, we don't see it. If hey. nobody ever comes to the house, and then, then they see it. The little one will be different. She's a different one story. <laughs> Hazel. <laughs> There are some Christians that are a little bit different. Mm. This guy built this golden image. He said, now what sign you hear the sound of it? Whoever hears the sound of this music, you obey, you bow down before it. And whoever doesn't, the consequences will be, you'll burn in a burning fiery furnace. That's the king's order. Well, there's lots of orders that come from the top in America and the world that they want you to bow to a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, some things are okay, but I'm going to tell you our president right now is, is digging some stuff out. He, I'm telling you, he is digging some stuff out. The real President Trump. <laughs> now, I don't want to get into politics this morning, but I want your faith in well, when you, you, you've But got there's a lot of garbage coming down the pipe that the enemy will say, I want you to bow down to it. Yes. <laughs> don't you stand up for your rights. You, you, you just cow down because we're in charge and we're going to overtake the world and we're going to do something until every Christian and every... I bothered me the other day that I see, I heard numbers of pastors that said, we, thank God I just finished up my vaccine. My second one. I don't know where you come This is my personal opinion. I go, where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? Where, where what are you saying? I went to the store this morning and I was ready for somebody to block me off in a, in a corner somewhere and tell me I had to put a mask on. No, I don't have a mask on because the mask, the, 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 the Fuji there, he's already said the mask don't help you in any way, shape, or form. Fuji, Fuji. Then what are you doing with it on? <laughs> now, I'm not saying everybody here go maskless. Please don't misstate what I'm trying to say. But sometimes we cow into certain things that there's no reason to cow down into them. He built the golden image. This man had some authority. I mean, he was the chief. He was the executive in charge. He was the, he was the big kahuna. He was, he was in charge of the whole world at that time. He built a golden image. He said, at what time you hear the sound of the music, I want you to bow down. Well, that's good. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time when the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people and all the nations and the languages, sounds like a worldwide thing, fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews they spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man should hear, when they heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, namely, these men, O king, have not regarded thee, they serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready that at the, what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, sackbut, psaltery, 
and dulcimer and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Very well it will be. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? The trap of the enemy is to get you to a point where you don't feel like there's any way out and you give in. Amen. You're out of time. <laughs> if, if and when he gets you to that point of giving in, you've got a decision that you've got to make. I'm either going to give in or I'm not. Do I quit or do I continue? Moses! Yes, sir. Get them children of Israel and get them moving. Yes, sir. <coughs> he got over a million of them moving. They destroyed, they, 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 they took all the riches of the Egyptians and headed towards the promised land. All of a sudden, Pharaoh was stirred up. He went, what in God's name is this happening? What happened here? They've taken off. They've got no reason to do that. They headed towards the Red Sea. Mountains were on both sides, and now Pharaoh and all of his armies and all of his cohorts are coming after him. They realized they messed up. Now his Moses out here, the Red Sea is in front of them, mountains on both sides, and now Pharaoh's army is coming back, coming up behind him. What do you do? You turn it around and just make obeisance to Pharaoh and say, yes, no. we, we. There's enough of these kind of stories. That's why I went with the, you know, one we've, we're very familiar with. We've heard it before. What are you going to do? Probably ask a question like Moses did, probably help them. Lord, what do we do now? There is no way through it. There's no way out. God said, go, get, go down there and get down knee deep in the Red Sea. Stretch your arm out. Hold it over the sea. God sent a heavenly breach through there that made a big bee plow through that Red Sea, parted the waters, Amen. and commanded that he barked out an order that all million would, with the, they were shaking in their shoes. We're going to do what? Before they could get started. They said, what you do? Bring us out here to die? You're an idiot. Sometimes we look like idiots. Yeah. What are you doing standing up against them? Did you see, I don't know if anyone here this morning watched a, I don't even know how I got, I get a Stephen sent to me, standing up against tyranny on Easter Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning, there was a pastor and they were having services on God's holy day, on Easter Sunday morning. All of a sudden there was 8 to 10 to 12 police officers showed up with a woman that was doing, uh, telling them all about the COVID-19 and they couldn't have it. I'm going to tell you that I was so proud of that man. He stood up to that pulpit. He said, get out of And he was screaming. <laughs> get off this premises now. And they would bark out all of their orders. They said, this is where you're coming to shut you down. He said, I said, out of here. Out, Hallelujah. out, 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 out. Hallelujah. Get out of this church now. Hallelujah. I mean, they didn't move instantly, but in a matter of minutes, the woman backed down. <laughs> and all of the police officers walked out the back door. Mm -hmm. yeah, throw that yes! Oh, hallelujah. Well, Moses got fed up. He backed out an order and said, God has spoken much! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're either going to grab on to the, This is life and death. You're either going to grab on to some of these stories that God illustrated in the Bible or you're going to die. Amen. 
It's, it's, it's this close. We are in the midst of a battle for our lives. Amen. I'm fighting right now for our family, for our children, for our church. It's time that the children of God stand up. Hallelujah. I refuse to bow. I will not bow. Hallelujah. So at what time you hear the sound of all this music and you don't bow down, you will be cast immediately in a burning fiery furnace. Now what are you going to say? God will make a way. Of course, Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, button, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship which I have, the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God? That shall deliver you out of my hands. I've got you. I've got you right in my hand. I've got you right by the throat. And there's no way out. What is your answer? Mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, With all due respect, sir, O Nebuchadnezzar, they said, live forever. We are not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Amen. Yes. That's my answer. Mm -hmm. but, it, but be it known, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image, which thou hast set up. Hallelujah. I would add, now put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> That's my answer. No. We're not bowing, we're not giving in, and God will deliver us out of your hands. Okay. I put that in your pipe, smoke it, snort it, do whatever you want to, but hear what I'm saying. We're not bowing. We're not bowing. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. What are you going to do with somebody that won't do it? <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. That's what it says. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. In other words, you're going to overdo it. They're going to cook. <laughs> and he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. That's yeah, all over. That's it. That's the end of it. No. Period. Nope. Gone. Nope, nope. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, all we start talking on them. Yeah, been better off. Might have just succumbed to it, not say anything, don't stir up the trouble anymore. Whatever they say, it's okay. Whatever, should have done it. But God's just the people that ain't going to bow down. Yeah. <clears throat> then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished. And he rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Am I flipping out or what? What's wrong with me? 
Why is it then that I see four men? No, we cast in three. I'm rubbing my eyes, but there's four. Junior, did we throw three men into the fire or four? Three. How come? He's getting nasty with them. How come that I'm looking in that furnace and I'm seeing four? <laughs> he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. How did they go into the furnace? Bound. Bound. Mm -hmm. Well, it had to be bound. They fell down, he said, in the midst of the furnace. He said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt. And the four, form of the four is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, God's going to vindicate himself. That's right. You can't outrun from the presence of the Lord. I told Dylan this morning, I said, Dylan, if your mother heard us, you and I singing the songs that we sang 35 years ago with my mother, she would be flipping. Anyone else in my family, if they heard Dylan and I singing and they're going to remember back 40 years, they'd be flipping. Because you can't outrun the presence of the Lord. Right. I don't care who you are. You're not smart enough to outrun him. Amen. I told my older children, I had to tell them. They were becoming hellions. And I couldn't, I couldn't keep an eye on it. I was a body pooper. When the Spirit of God ever come over me and they were at the wrong place at the wrong time, Daddy showed up. Because I told him, you can go anywhere you want to go. You can do whatever you want to do. But my prayers are going to dog you until you die. Do it. I don't care what you do, but my prayers are on you, honey, and you won't outrun the presence of God. Amen. I don't care who you are. You cannot outrun the presence of God. Amen. When I held these babies and dedicated them to the Lord, I held them up when they come from the hospital, bare back, held them up to God, and said, Lord, this baby is yours. Amen. Give me wisdom. Give me insight on what to do. Amen. And I'll tell you, I didn't do everything right. I'll be the first to admit it. But I'm going to tell you when they come up into years and they started doing their own thing. The smoking used to be a big thing. And they knew I didn't smoke and I didn't want them smoking. So I went up into this third floor apartment building <laughs> unannounced without knocking on the door. I, I heard they were up there. And so here comes Daddy up over the stairs. I get to the third floor. And without knocking on the door, I opened this door. Well, I didn't know who was in the apartment. I had no way of knowing. I heard they were there. I up, turned the knob, walked in, and stood in the middle of the kitchen. I went, hey, is uh, Joy coming here? And Joy was just coming out of the living room, I guess, to the kitchen. And he was just lighting up a cigarette. <laughs> when he looked and saw me, he was dumbfounded. He was going, trying to put the cigarette out. I never said a word. Cigarettes to me was not a big item. I mean, it wasn't a punch in the face kind of thing to give the kids because they smoked. I didn't I know that was the discipline. You know, I didn't feel that way about them. I love my kids, and I just said, I'm going to interrupt you. I'm a, I'm a body pooper. I, I can't help it. I said, I said, I'd like you boys to come with me. That's all I said. And so the three of us went marching out of that kitchen. They were right behind me. Oh, I've been caught by Dad. And I told him again, you can do anything you want to do. I love you too much. Not to say anything, I do anything. I love you too much. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. There's some people God's got in this country that are praying for the United States of America. Yeah. They've got some people that have prayed for every one of us that are here today. And the enemy knows he does not stand a chance. He don't stand a chance, and he knows it. 
Yep. He knows that his days are numbered. So he will use everybody that, that he can to try to intimidate and get us to lose our confidence and faith in God. Then Hebrew boys, they knew that they knew that they knew. There was no getting around it. Said, okay. <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not. We, I don't care how much music you have. When we hear it, we're not bowing to the golden image. That's not our God. You can get as mad as you want. I had a fellow so mad at me one time, and one of my bosses, he, he wanted to kill me. He tell God I got a natural cause. <laughs> he said, I just like to smash you in the face. I said, I tell you what. And he stood this high. He's big as a big as Dylan. I mean, the, I mean, right. I mean, I didn't get you. He could have squished me like this. I weighed 150 pounds at the time. I was just a little scrawny guy. I looked at him, pointed my little finger up, looking up at him. I said, I tell you what, if you knock me down, you better kill me. Because if I get up, you cannot eat a claw hammer. I don't care how good you are. Make the size of the fight, dog. Get, as Christians, we get to have some fight. If you haven't got any, honey, you've got to get some. Because you're not going to make it if you don't stand up for truth. That's right. And when we do, we've got somebody bigger than I and bigger than you that's fighting our battles for us. Amen. And uh, I said, he's fighting our battles for us. Jesus. David, what do you think you're doing? I'm going to tell you. I was out tending the sheep one day and a bear come against me. And then a lion. And the lion seized the lamb out of the flock. He said, I went after him. What did you do to the bear? I grabbed him right by the beard and I smote him. 